So next on the list is just gonna be a compression test. And I'm just gonna check the state of the health of the cylinder. It is a hot engine. It's not to say anything will be different when it's cold. Also, um, this vehicle is direct injection. So being that it's direct injection, it's a possibility that it could have carbon on the valves. So that is one thing that when I looked inside of the bore or in, in, in the cylinder, should have noted how those valves look. And it is getting oil, being that the direct injection isn't going to be pre-valve and it's directly in the combustion chamber, nothing's gonna clean that oil off of the valves here. So if, let's just see what the compression looked like. Uh, this is not to say again that there's compression issues during a cold startup. Uh, that's probably since the code specified the issue was during start, uh, not specifically, but based off the context it was during a startup condition, then our issue, our compression may be necessary to be checked during a cold start. So we're making 120 PSI, which is, you know, it's a turbo car, it's a nine to one compression. Let's see what, let's do one more, just to be on the safe side. So I got another reading of close to 120. And don't, don't know why I didn't really want to build up that wheel, but let's see if number two, does even better I thought maybe it was my equipment why I didn't build up early on that's why I moved the gauge this one made about 115 or so let me see if I can try it again That's a running compression of 180. Let me put it back in the other one and see if I can get it to build up just like two did. But I swear I let it run for a little while, but I might have had equipment issues. So that was 180 on cylinder two. I just need to change the valve core in my gauge. It was slow to rise, but it eventually got to 180. I honestly think we're just dealing with uh, valve problems. The valves are probably just need to be clean. I'm gonna try this again. Got it. Saturated with smoke. We have the valves closed. Look at all that. comes right out so it would be a good idea to you know maybe recommend that we clean the valves make an attempt to do that but I, I can't get a good visual of what the valves look like with the camera because I can only see but so much about 30% of it with the camera and I can't get on the opposite side and look I mean, it would be a good idea just to pull the intake off and get a better look inside of there. And while I'm in there, make an attempt to clean it. I'm gonna let the customer know um, what I suggest and, and go from there. But in the meantime, it'd probably be a good idea to start it up, let it misfire, let it stop misfire, and do that same test and see what happens. So here's the first startup. I got misfire counter average on one, three, and two, and then the short-term fuel trim. This fuel trim went lean before doing the first startup, doing the misfire, so we should see the same thing. If it goes lean, then that's an indication that there's an internal, like a vacuum leak at the intake, 
and um, it's, it, things are not combusting properly and all the excess oxygen is getting pushed out in the exhaust. So it's misfiring. One is just running away. We went negative. So now when this is jumping around from positive to negative. Still misfiring. Went positive. So because it went negative, it was taking away fuel. If all that fuel is being pushed in the combustion pro in the combustion chamber and not being burned, I mean that's why we're gonna get the rich condition. So that that kind of makes sense, but it went from rich to lean. So doing that initial stop and that fuel dump, that's probably why we got what we got. I'm gonna let it warm up and get mm, like 100 plus degrees, like 130 degrees or so, then we'll do the same test. All right, right now I can shut it down and start it back up and it's not gonna misfire. So I can run out there now, pull the plug, and do the same test. All right, same test. See if it shoots out or not. It's not as bad as it was before. Before, it just shot out like crazy. Now it's just more of a trickle. Yeah, we're just gonna have some valve problems. That's all that is. So let me show you what I what the valves look like. They have small granules built up on the valve itself. And you can't help but to think there's probably gonna be some on the seat. It's a kind of a long shot, but I got an idea. I don't know how well it's gonna work. But if let me see what the rim is. You know, if I if this goes, eh, no, it doesn't quite sit in the head. But I imagine, what if if I leave this valve open, pour diesel into the chamber? Uh oh, what, the, what happened? Oh, my camera has got oil on the side, on the front, the front face. If I pour diesel down there. And then I put like an agitator inside with the diesel in there. Like it'll bubble up and get around the valves. I mean, could it clean it? Get the valve as far as they'll go? Because the only thing it's going to do is just drip down right back in the head and the bore. I mean, diesel's not going to harm anything. My biggest fear is it actually getting into the crankcase. But I'd imagine, because if I have an agitator down there, like a hose, going straight down the cylinder, bubbling, and I'll just hook it up to my air compressor, lower the air to probably about like five or 10 PSI, and just let it keep bubbling. I'd imagine it'll keep it pushed up to where it wouldn't, it's less susceptible to going down. Diesel isn't gonna harm anything if a little bit get inside the oil, so I'm not gonna worry about that so much. I want to know if it's going to clean that valve or not. So I think it's worth like a passive attempt to see what will happen. And again, I'm going to get the valve as far as I can go down and pour diesel in the cylinder, put a hose down there, connect the mail in to my or some sort of adapter to my compressor hose and just turn the pressure low and just let it agitate it. So let me see if I can get that erected and we'll see if this experiment will work. I'll let the car cool down for a little bit. I want to start constructing something, but this is the piston top. I'm going to get a visual of that. That's what the dome looks like. I can't guarantee that's going to get clean, but the valve is what's important. I have the intake valves at uh, I want to say bottom dead center they're open as full as they're going to open we're going to try to work on getting this carbon off of here and 
logically I'm I'm thinking you know the agitator with the bubbles just like a washing machine or you know, it'll we'll see maybe the grit will work itself loose and start beating up against itself and get the rest of it loose but that diesel I'm using diesel here so this is this is just gonna be my cleaning agent I'm gonna construct something within the next 10 minutes I got a small pump I could use like for a fish tank or something or I'll do my air hose thing I was thinking about so I'm hoping that this will not uh, go through the pistons rings and the oil rings and get go down into the combustion chamber so I think we'll be fine I think we'll be logically because if we put diesel in the engine and let it run like we're doing a flush it wouldn't bypass those so I'm assuming because the rings are good it shouldn't we shouldn't have that problem let me construct something I found a old aerator I got laying around the house because I had the fish that I used to have I tried tried it out um, but it still works and they came with a lot of hose and it's working right now it's very quiet so I'm gonna try this route first see how well it agitates if it gets on the valves good enough then we'll use this if not then I'll probably need to apply more air pressure so I'm hoping that I can fill it all the way up in the chamber and just submerge those valves so let's let's do this I did clean the bore out for the spark plugs so we should be okay with that not quite up there yet I'm gonna put a little bit more in there it's down right there the valves are up here Right now it's above the spark plug hole. I'm gonna see if I can get the camera down there. Maybe we can see if the valves are submerged or not. Well, yeah, I can't see anything. I'm gonna take a chance and I guess it is. I probably could just extract some of the fluid out and see if the valves are wet which will be a good idea. So let me, I gotta make an, a pump anyway. So let me design something that'll probably get down in there and I can extract some of the fluid out. I had enough hose to get it in there and do the old school siphoning method. So I'm gonna let that do its thing, get some of it out, and then I'll check and see if the valves are submerged or not. Just to be on the safe side, yes, the valves are in fact saturated in the fluid. I mean, logically, if it hit the, we're in the bore now, if it got up here, then that valve is, those valves are well saturated. So let me do what I'm gonna do, and we'll, we'll come back in several hours. I'm gonna let it sit for probably like 10 to 24 hours. I literally lost that check valve just now. But here it is. That's all it's going to do. I'd imagine things are happening inside there for the better. But as long as the water's move, the fluid's moving, it's getting agitated, I guess it'll eventually clean the valves. So let's, let's wait it out. What time is it now? Uh, it's this 203 yeah, about 10 hours or just probably so I will come back and check it periodically but when I finish I'll let you know what I went through if I had to refill it or not so it's been an hour uh, I want to say it's about yeah it's been a been a little I think I think I did this at 202 or something like that so it's been an hour this is what the fluid 
looks like. I siphoned whatever this mason jar quantity, whatever it holds. So I siphoned that much out and it's definitely looking a little darker. Let me show you the difference here. So here's the photo. You can see it's getting cleaner around the chamber. Let's go, let me turn this off. So you can see it's getting cleaner around the chamber up here, unlike before. So I'd imagine some of the carbon on the valves are also getting cleaner. The diesel is getting in the valve on the valve stem. I didn't get an aerial view, but this looks better. I have to find an older view if I have it, but we're going to do one now. I want to change up the mixture and put some brake cleaner in there because I, I prefer that as a solvent more than anything because I know for a fact that works so I'm gonna put a percentage of brake cleaner in here and see if that makes a difference and I'm gonna let it sit for a couple more hours but at the moment it is making a difference I didn't get all of the diesel out uh, what that mason jar is willing to contain because there's some still sitting in the bottom I don't want to change the viscosity because I don't want it to fall all inside of the oil. So I'm going to add fresh diesel in there. Keep that around so we can compare it. And then I'll add a percentage of brake cleaner. Alright, so this is the new solution. This is more 50-50. It's going to look a little separate, but as long as it agitates. and uh, But the brake cleaner is settled more so at the top which is which is not a big deal uh, it's, it's going to agitate anyway so I'm going to pour that back in there let it do its thing and we'll come back and take a note all right it's been 20 hours this is the next day it's about nine in the morning so we started yesterday at about one pulled some out changed the chemical makeup about an hour later but we saw how dirty it was and well, I'm glad to say that it's still bubbling. So that means the fluid didn't drop through the pistons and deplete. Yeah, let me close that off. Yeah, it's still up there. Seem like it is. So let's go ahead and extract it. See what the color of the fluid looks like. I'm excited to see it. I can't even begin to tell you, I was thinking about coming back at 1 o'clock in the morning and pulling this fluid out and seeing what it looks like, but patience. Let me get this out, let's see what the fluid looks like. We'll go from there. So I got the hose. This bar is going to go down the cylinder. I'm going to suck on this and not use my vacuum pump, which will go through the line. Then all out the siphon down in that jar. Here we go. So it's not as dirty as it was originally. Because it was black at first. Hopefully. Hopefully I got it down here pretty good. Uh-oh. Let's let it do its thing. So here's the before. And then here's the after. can't quite see if there's any sediments at the bottom just yet but it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to strain it out if I can find a strainer or just let it sit and accumulate so this was the the brunt of it I mean originally because there was a lot of carbon in there so it probably just wiped off that surface layer. The main thing is getting deep down in there and getting the rest of the chunks out. So hopefully that second portion, the after, consists of that. Let's get the camera down there. Enough of me talking. So here's the piston top. Can't say I notice much of a difference there. 
um, but it's still wet and it still has the fluid penetrating in the sludge there so I don't we'll we'll come back to that the main thing is the top portion what do our valves look like oh, <laughs> oh wow that is amazing hold on did I see that right let me let me reserve that's a big difference look at that look at the valve the carbon the carbon is like nearly gone at valve there let me let me get that. Hold on one second. I need to clean the camera off to get a better visual of the valve here. But check that out. Look at all that down through there. That's a lot cleaner in the chamber. Now it's not gonna it's not gonna emulate, you know, elbow grease, but the the theme is here those seats are a lot cleaner so when I start it up hopefully it gives it a better contact at the seat there because that sludge that was built that was trying to knock off may have got lodged on the valve itself and wedged between the seats so in theory if this breaks down the sludge or the carbon you should smash it well enough to where it'll detach and fall off let's look on the side look at that that's a lot cleaner that made a big difference this is the chamber of the cylinder head before it didn't look like that let's see if we can get the valves of the exhaust valve let's see how those look I'm pretty sure those got resolved also I expected to smoke when I started up so I'm not gonna act like I don't what I'm going to do is just start up with the spark plug out and get as much crap as I can out because there's still some in the piston and let it shoot out the top because I don't want to hydro lock anything. Look at all that. And the chamber, the valve stem. I think, the again, the biggest thing is the seat. How well is it going to, how well are they looking? You know, all through there I figure even the other chamber I figure if we got the chamber really clean we've made some significant change I think I got a little oil on the face of the camera now it looks better though let's start it up without the spark plug in there and see what happens So what I could do is just that same test where I put air pressure down there with the valves closed and see how it responds through the intake and see if that made any type of change while it's still cold. Oh gosh, I'm falling. <laughs> that would be so funny. <laughs> I saw that. Oh, I slipped on a wrench. <laughs> so I could just do the same test. Uh, let's let's do that while it's cold because I don't want to wait several hours to go through this again and we can see if it shoots out or not because before it just shot out and that was definitely a sign that there were the valves were despite them being closed pressure was leaking out and it couldn't seal properly here's a better view with all the valves closed Chamber's definitely a lot better. Definitely see it's a lot cleaner.
So it actually has removed a decent percentage of it. A decent percentage, decent percentage of carbon. Okay, the valves are closed. Let's do that same smoke test. All right, I got the smoke in there and the intake. Now, I'm not going to not expect smoke to come out from the intake. I expect it to leak a little bit. The biggest thing is, can we get it to minimize? Because originally on the cold start, it would just throw out. It would just, when we hooked it up, took the air up to it the first time and tried this experiment, it just threw the smoke out. So I wanted to see if it'll slow down. So that's the biggest thing. Let's see what happens. Oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> look how slow it's coming out now. It came out a lot more slower because before it just it just threw it out. The biggest thing is it going to misfire when it started up. So we know I wound up cleaning the combustion chamber. Did it get all the stuff off the valve? I'm gonna put the old plug in there because I do have a new plug. Um, put the old spark plug in there. Get it to run. Drive it. Let it uh, let it break that carbon loose. Digest it, and I'm gonna come back and do a cold startup. So let's get this in here. As a, and as a matter of fact, we're going to capture this first startup, assuming that we got all the diesel out of it, which I doubt, and we'll see how it responds to. So we're just going to do a neighboring cylinder and watch short term. Now I expected a misfire, so I'm not going to act like I'm not. Oh, well, uh, what are we doing? running but let's see how far it goes it's taking away fuel because it's rich but the thing is it's not reaching it's not going to 169 as rapidly as it was I think this made an improvement I'm gonna let this level out I mean, because obviously I need to take it on test drive. I need to get all that diesel out the system and make sure I can knock that carbon off before I do that next cold startup. So that's going to be the biggest test here. But right now it made a difference. It didn't even run up, even with all that diesel in there, it didn't even misfire up to 169 misfire counts. So this is already a big difference here. I'm going to take it on test drive. I got to put some gas in this person's car anyway and we're gonna do a legitimate cold start I'm gonna let it sit for several hours hell I might even wait till tomorrow but usually after it sits for several hours get three hours to work leave it in the garage let it leave the hood up let it um, cold soak I think I'm gonna say that right it's not a heat soak cold I that's the antithesis of that but let it get cold and we'll do a first startup see what happens but I think we may have fixed this with this passive remedy so I went on a what we call a 15 mile test drive let me show you what I found out this is amazing here's a spark plug here look how good the spark plug looks now look how good that tip looks and call me crazy but this definitely look a lot better than it did before. Call me crazy. I do have a new plug I'm going to install. That is the old plug that was in there. But let me show you another thing. Check out the bore. Look how clean that is. Look at that. The top of the valves. It took all that carbon. Knocked all that stuff off. Look at the top of the valves. Let's see if I can get up in there a little more. This engine's hot, so I think. There we go. Look at that.
you can see it's, it's obviously cleaner in the chamber here. I'm going to show you the piston top shortly. It's definitely a lot cleaner. Let's look at the piston top. Definitely tail is a lot cleaner. Uh oh, it's getting a little hot. Hold on. I don't want to damage my camera. I had my camera damaged before. And that's why I had to buy a whole new camera because of that heat. And I put it, wound up putting it in an exhaust system. Hopefully, it doesn't damage this one. Oh gosh. Oh man. Dang it. Yeah. So I broke another one. Dang it. Let's see if I can. Yeah. See, the piston tops have made a big difference also. I don't want to put it back down there because this car is hot. I mean, very hot. But we there's a big difference in the... I tell, as a matter of fact, I am going to put it down there because we got to look at the valves when they're open. So let me let it cool down a little bit and I'm going to get the valves to open. And then we'll, we'll look at the valves. All right, I'm going to do this real quick because my camera is on the way out of here it's starting to fail but that is a big difference from what we were dealing with before versus now all right bear with me here my camera is literally on its way out but look around here you can see that it's way cleaner the valve seats are a lot better let me see if I can turn this around. There's our exhaust valve on the left. Right. All right. right off to the right here is the right. It's the other valve. Uh -oh. See how clean that is. If you look inside the bore, that's a lot better. The center of the chamber, definitely a lot cleaner. Let's see if we can come back up, flip it around. Oh, no, I'm sorry, man. This this camera, I gotta buy another one. What I'm gonna do? We're going. We saw there was a big difference. I mean, it cleaned a lot. That 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 was a good idea using the agitator. Um, I'm not sure if this car has any additional problems, but I mean, when I was driving it, it would misfire on three and four. It'll periodically have little misses, but that's fine. It had cars when they have a um, check engine light, they have to meet a certain criteria of a misfire or a crank angular distortion before it generate a hard code. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna put the new plug in here. We're going to see what happens during a cold start. I got things I got to do. So I'm going to let this sit for a while. And we'll do a legitimate cold start and see how it responds from there and conclude this video. Because right now, we look at it, the camera's failing. Look at that. That heat, man. It's my second Tesla long uh, adapter there. But anyway, we're going to... We're gonna, we're going to see how it responds in a cold startup and see if this actually works. Even though we got the chamber completely clean. What is it going to do when the code start? Because it has misfires while driving, but the biggest thing is when it triggered that code originally, it manifested while stationary. Let's see if that gets fixed. All right, it's been like a, it's been like an hour. Honestly, I just, I just want to spend like 60 seconds, do a startup after one hour, and see how it responds. And let's see, let's see if we're in the right direction. There's no data for coolant temperature. But let's see what happens. <laughs> okay. One did not even misfire. It's crazy. That's cool. That's not crazy, but that's great. Let me look at the coolant temp temperature. So the coolant temperature is 161 degrees after sitting about an hour. So we're in we're in good shape. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it five hours. Let it get down to ambient air temperature. That's going to be official test here. If it's at the ambient air temperature, which is about 80, 90 degrees outside, and it starts up with no misfire, this issue is fixed.
All right, it's been about four hours. The car should have reached normal ambient air temperature. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna look at the coolant temp. So let's boost air, coolant temperature. Where's it at? Coolant temp is 112 degrees. Now it's 100 degrees in this garage because it's a very hot day. So that's that's well enough right here. All the metal had time to relax. And if it's going to misfire, it's going to misfire. So I'm not going to wait till it get uh, 90 degrees because it's set for like four hours to get to this point. All right, we're just gonna look at misfire information. So one with the problem child. So we're gonna look at this. And we're just gonna compare it to two, two, three, and four. So here's the telltale now. Place your bets. And three. That's wow. <laughs> wow that's a big difference that's a big difference remember before it would populate and run up to 140 169 and this is this has been sitting for like four hours so this is plenty of time to reach regular temperatures of the amp with uh, the outside temperature so this is good this is fixed so the misfire is fixed down below with that solution the diesel and the agitator inside the combustion chamber so that actually resolved our misfires I'm pretty excited that this actually worked but being that I saw how clean those valves were once I put the agitator in there and sat for about 10 hours and it made a notable difference that was a definitely a telltale sign we're going in the right direction so it's hard to believe that those valves caused that problem. I don't, I'm not, I don't even know what specific grit got in there that would cause all that. I don't want to know, but I, I do know it's notably cleaner. Diesel did its, did its job. And this misfire issue during startup is 100% resolved. And mind you, when they bought the car from the manu what's the manufacturer from the dealership or wherever they bought it from, they tried to resolve it by changing the coil and the plug too. That wasn't the problem. The problem was definitely a valve issue. Now, spark plugs, if you're gonna question the fact that, well, you change the spark plug, you fix the problem. No, that's, that's not entirely true. When spark plugs fail, they're going to ultimately fail. Like, you're not gonna have, um, usually you're not going to have those intermittent problems now i've had plugs intermittently work but typically when they fail they fail they get fouled out and they fail that plug was not fouled out it looked fine so i think we can place blame on the valves and i and rightfully so so we're in good situ we're we're definitely in a good situation from the test that i did that should have negated any question with the spark plug had the valves closed the, I did the smoke test in the cut, uh, intake here. We noticed a big change from previous, so we saw that. I think this is just irrefutable proof that this is a viable method to clean the upper respiratory system, as I'm gonna call it. That's what I'm gonna consider to hit the upper respiratory system, respiratory. So in regards to sea foam, the reason why I didn't use sea foam was because a while ago I wound up doing some back testing on some sludge I had from a Toyota Camry. It was an old video. And I took four different jars, put seafoam, transmission fluid, diesel, brake cleaner, and I think a mixture of all that other stuff. It was a mess. And the only thing that really worked was brake cleaner. It dissolved that sludge to nothing. And diesel. Diesel worked, but it didn't dissolve it like brake cleaner did. But the diesel actually took that sludge off and hence when we have a port injection system look at how clean those valves are i mean if gas wasn't as thick as thin sorry i probably could have put it in there and sloshed it around and it probably served the same purpose glass is a gas is a cleaning agent also 
but the diesel is thicker it lubricates it served its purpose and we saw that work today well over the course of a few days so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna let my customer know that we got this car fixed and it is resolved that's the old fluid and uh, this is dirty fluid so i might pour this back in my kerosene heater i'm gonna let him know we got this issue fixed and uh, charge accordingly so the good thing is we didn't have to go inside and pull any of these things off work worth i'm about i can't get out right risk breaking any of this plastic stuff i was able to put the diesel in the combustion chamber and work on something else i set it and forget it and this is what we got so i'm not saying it's going to work on all vehicles but based off the construction and design of this cylinder head it worked out just fine good thing the pistons were fine because it didn't seep down the seep down to the crankcase now a little bit's not going to hurt anything but if anything happens i'll definitely update hit that link subscribe to the channel stay informed how to register some work and i'll see you next one